Good afternoon. Welcome to CWTV Online Community Channel on Local Issues segment. As you know, main parties are gearing up to general elections on this Thursday, 12th December. So it's important for you to make every effort to vote and choose a government that works for you. Like every other councillor or MP from respective parties, are working hard in their constituency. MPs have responsibilities to three main groups, their constituents, parliament and their political party. Voting gives you the power to decide how the UK is run. The MPs you help to elect will be making decisions on issues that you care about, including NHS, housing, education and the environment. MPs represent your views in parliament and can influence the policy issues you care about you must vote on Thursday for your party. So to help us to understand more better, uh, I'm joined by Liz McInnes, a former Member of Parliament for Haywood and Milton for Labour Party. Hello. Liz, welcome. Thank you. It's good how to be are here. The, how are the energy levels through your campaigns? Uh, we're maintaining our energy mm -hmm. levels, but we are looking forward to polling day and yeah. getting the results and having a well-earned rest over the weekend. And we've got uh, Christmas to celebrate as well. We do, we do. Uh, Christmas has been on the back burner in my house uh, <laughs> during this election campaign, but I am looking forward to spending Christmas with my family. Great. Uh, Liz, first of all, tell us briefly about your career. Uh, secondly, I am aware that you have been uh, selected, elected as an MP uh, since 2014. Yeah. Uh, so briefly tell us what positions uh, you've had held to date. Yeah, I mean, I used to work for the NHS. Um, I'm a clinical scientist and I've spent uh, over 30 years working in uh, clinical science in our NHS. Right. Yeah. Um, I was elected in 2014. Um, it, as a member of parliament, I have been um, a shadow minister in yeah. the Department of Communities and Local Government. And uh, following that uh, appointment, I was then asked to join uh, the Shadow Foreign and Commonwealth Office team. Mm. And I've been a Shadow Foreign Minister for over three years now, representing um, Southern Asia and Sub-Saharan Africa. So quite a large part of the world with yes, a yes. lot going on there. Lots of experience there. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, Britain has been uh, haggling over the nation's withdrawal from the European Union. Union. Mm. Uh, the Brexit. Yeah. Uh, what's your stance on it? Yeah, I mean, Brexit has been very divisive for yeah. our country and uh, it is overshadowing this general election, but this election isn't just about Brexit, yeah. it's also about our standard of living and sure. our public services. Um, but Brexit has been very divisive for this country and I, I do feel that in 2016 when we had the referendum, mm people maybe weren't given the full facts about mm. what leaving the EU would actually mean. And I think mm. over the last three and a half years, we have actually found out how complicated yes. leaving the EU mm. is. And that, that goes for me as well, mm. as a politician, and also mm. my fellow MPs. I think we've all found things out in the last few years that we weren't aware yeah. that we had these arrangements with the EU. Um, I think major decisions do need time and uh, absolutely. more thorough thinking. Absolutely, yeah. and that's why I think it's quite misleading for yeah. other parties to yeah. be using slogans like get Brexit done when there is actually no quick fix. This is going to be a very long process and even, even if we agree a deal, um, it's going to take a long time to actually yeah. negotiate mm -hmm. how that deal is going to be put into operation. So I'm afraid yeah. there are no quick fixes, there isn't a clean break yeah. Brexit. Yeah which some parties are trying to sell. Yeah. But I, I want to get a deal that works for people in my constituency of Hayward yeah. and Middleton. Mm -hmm. I want to get a deal that works for the EU so that we're still, they are our nearest neighbours. Yeah. We need to be able to trade with them and we yeah. need to be able to maintain the excellent relationships that we've had yeah. with other European countries um, since the EU was formed. Yeah, you need to have this global partnership that works for everybody. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. 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 I don't know that you mentioned a lot uh, about your experiences, particularly with the NHS. Uh, and, um, you know, through, through this, we would like to know some of your experiences in holding those positions, particularly as an MP for the Russell Council. Uh, the council has a responsibility for public, 
public health yeah. and improving health and well-being of residents. Uh, what do you think is the current state of health in the borough of Rochdale? Yeah, I mean, there are certain areas of public health where we, we actually do quite badly in Rochdale. And I have mm. spoken in Parliament about some of sure. these issues um, because, you know, as you said in your introduction, one of the groups of people I'm accountable to are my constituents. Yes. And I do try in Parliament to represent the views of my constituents and the particular problems that we have in the area. Mm. We have the, the worst... Um, Childhood dental health um, of, of any area of the northwest, unfortunately, and that's yeah. something I've spoken to the public health team mm -hmm. at Rochdale Council about. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, due to government funding cuts, um, I mean the 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 budget, the public health budget for Rochdale Council has been cut by millions of pounds over yeah. the last few years. There's less and less money mm -hmm. to be able to spend on awareness raising campaigns and on getting that message across to people that it's really important that they take the children to the dentist. That message is just getting lost. It's not that it's not available, it's that people aren't aware that they should be taking yeah. the children there. And I think NHS has suffered immensely over mm. the years, yeah. uh, particularly when you have closing down of services, yeah. uh, like the one we had in Rochdale, for example, and you do feel the pinch. Uh, and so, in view of that, uh, in the future, how would you create a better health and social care system? Yeah, I mean, the Labour Party policy is mm. to invest more in our NHS yeah. and also to invest in the staff. I mean, I'm an ex-NHS worker yes. and I know how... I was also a trade union rep, yeah. so I was really at the, mm -hmm. at the, the cutting edge of... Yes. You know, I got all the problems. My colleagues brought all the problems to me. I, and so I really saw um, the bad side of the NHS. Yeah. Yeah. But I could see staff morale going down and down and yeah. down since 2010 since the late yeah. since the Tory Lib Dem coalition came into power yeah. and prior to 2010 just just as an example we'd spent a long time negotiating a new pay structure within the NHS um, which was actually giving NHS staff the pay that they deserved it was worked out on a on a very um, complicated job evaluation system and people actually started to get the pay that they deserved yeah. and the coalition government just came along and refused to recognize the pay review bodies and and put a pay freeze on NHS staff yeah. um, which was really demoralizing especially after we'd fought so hard yeah. to actually get a reasonable rate of pay for people who are working very hard yeah and in very demanding conditions. I have to say, I mean, uh, I'm absolutely very proud of NHS. Yeah. Um, I've been a governor for dependent care as well. Mm. So I know some of the fantastic resources and uh, uh, facilities we had, as long as, as long without the expertise. Uh, but if you cut resources, cut the funding, uh, the services suffer. Yeah. And so does the residents. Yeah, that's right. So hopefully, um, Things will improve in the future. Yeah, well, a Labour government will give a 5% pay rise to all public service workers. Quality learning um, and education is important for any council. Uh, parents, uh, I feel, do have the right to engage in decision making, particularly at the policy level, uh, in terms of the age, the ability of, and the needs of the child. Mm. Uh, do you feel that the parents are involved uh, in these decision makings uh, for, for, for the children in schools? I mean, obviously... It, Sorry, and particularly taking into account the cultural needs as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously that depends upon the particular school, but every school yeah. should have a, a minimum level of engagement with parents. Yeah, yeah. Parents should be able to make the views known, mm -hmm. um, whether that's through meetings um, with the teachers and the head teacher or whether that's via the, the governors parent governors it, yeah, 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 yeah on the school's yeah. governing body yeah, yeah. Um, but there should always be a way for parents to engage with schools and any any teaching should be age appropriate as well I think yeah. a lot of parents are concerned um, particularly about things like um, religious and cultural yeah. and uh, relationship education. Yeah. I think parents do sometimes get quite concerned. I know yeah. when my son was at school, mm. um, I the school always used to write to me 
if they were going to do any kind of uh, relationship education and, yeah. and they would actually get the parents' approval. Yeah. And I always said yes because I always, you know, I think I, I knew I trusted the school and I knew it would be age appropriate. And I think it's, it's certainly benefited my son and all the children uh, yeah. at, at his school as well. So, but I do, I do think schools need to be very sensitive yeah. to making sure that parents' voices are heard. Good, good. In terms of the educational attainment levels in the borough, uh, do you think that's improved over the years? Um, we're still not quite uh, reaching the national average, unfortunately, right. in the borough yeah. of Rochdale. Yeah. We're, we're just below the national average. and. I think a lot of that is to do with um, with areas of deprivation that yeah. we have in the borough. Um, our schools, every single school in my constituency of Hayward and Middleton has taken a, a cut per pupil. Mm. Um, they've, they've all taken a hit, every mm. single one, yeah. um, under this government. And a mm. Labour government would ensure that our schools are invested in. I know I've met with head teachers in the area and they've said to me that they've had to cut teaching assistants, they've had to get rid of people who are really bringing value to the school. Mm. But the, the one thing I would like to mention, which is really good about Rochdale, is our sixth form college, yeah. which is rated outstanding, yeah. and also Hotwood Hall FE College. And yeah. I've, if you look at my speeches in Parliament, you'll see I've spoken a lot about okay. further education, which is just the forgotten part of education, and it really needs more investment. But having said that, Hotwood Hall does very well in giving uh, children in my constituency opportunities to study subjects that they might not have first thought of. Yeah, yeah. I, I think uh, there are many... Um things within the Rochdale Borough that we can be proud yeah, of. Absolutely, and, yeah, absolutely, uh, yeah. The, yeah, the teachers do an amazing job. Parliament needs to know. Yeah, I, I keep telling <laughs> Parliament. <Give it. laughs> Safeguarding and um, protecting vulnerable uh, children, young people and uh, adults, uh, um, you know, and with this organised crime as well. What resources and measures um, are put in place to make our borough safer? Yeah, I mean, you, you've hit on a real issue here, and as the MP for this area, I am constantly contacted by constituents about crime, fear of crime, perceptions of crime, and actual crime, where people discover that because we are so short of staff in the police force, mm -hmm. that the police, unfortunately, are All now in a position where they're having to prioritise mm -hmm. crimes. Yeah. Um, it is it is very, very concerning. And, and also, we've lost most of our neighbourhood policing and I think that's really important to safeguarding that yeah. if people see police visible on the streets, PCSOs, um, I think they are, it, it gives people a sense of security and well-being yeah. when mm -hmm. they see the police round and about and I also think that it's, it acts as a deterrent to crime as well and the other thing is police at grassroots level, they can spot where trouble's starting to begin and they can actually deal with it before it escalates into something much more serious and we've got to get back to that model of neighbourhood policing and that's certainly what Labour's policy on policing is all about. It's about re reinstating the neighbourhood policing plan. I think the uh, partnership between the police, the council, the community leaders... Yeah, yeah, that's um, really important. Uh, ...and also people from uh, different faith institutions has worked marvellous over the years. Yeah. And uh, that unity um, is, is the strength of the borough. And, and it's, I think it's working so far, but we can do more. Yeah. Uh, we have to do more. Uh, so what type of organisations are you involved with in the Safer uh, Community Partnership? Um, I mean, there are so many different organisations. Yeah. There's a council, there's Greater Manchester Police, yeah. there's the probation services. Mm -hmm. Um, even even the health service comes into yeah, it. Yeah. Um, so so I'm, and I'm involved in all these different groups, um, and I think public health as well. I think yeah. it, you know I think people's safety is also a public health issue, and the public health team, if they had more funding, would be able to get messages out to people about how to protect themselves and how to safeguard themselves and how to live healthier and yeah. safer lives. Certainly, Rochdale Borough is part of. It's diversity, yeah, um, and it has a twenty-one percent of total po population from the BME community. Uh, and in order to uh, have a better understanding uh, and the cultural needs of that community from the of the BME communities, do you think we have uh, done enough or uh, doing enough 
uh, or what can be done to improve better relations and communications and engagement? Mm. I mean, I think I think Rochdale Council does a lot mm -hmm. to um, to promote diversity and um, to to highlight uh, different cultural activities mm. in the in the various different communities that make up the borough. But there's always room to do more. Yeah. Um, I think things like um, the Rochdale Council of Moss opening up uh, the moss on on the on the open days. I think yeah. that's really helpful. Um, yeah, 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 and celebrating those yeah. festivals. I think yeah. that's become it's become yeah. much more mainstream. I think in the UK, and it helps. It just helps people to understand um, if we can go and 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 visit Moss and see the kind of things that different communities do. Yeah. It just means that it loses that element of mystery. Yeah. And yeah. I think people actually enjoy getting involved in other people's yeah. cultures. I think it all yeah. improves the quality of our lives. In, in terms of the uh, the plan, the place plan of uh, for the borough, mm. it um, stipulates uh, community cohesion. Yeah. Um, it, it works towards it, but as you say, there's a lot more that can be done. But I do believe that uh, art, culture, and heritage, and community cohesion events are not just social activities, but they are the business as well. Yeah. And and I think we need to bring more quality into the borough. Um, it has done uh, previously. It just continues to do do so because we have places like the Middleton Arena, uh, the Gracefield Theatre. Then we have uh, the Harewood uh, Civic Hall. Uh, and we have open spaces as well, like parks. Mm. So there's fantastic um, facilities on offer, but we just need to fill it up with quality work. And hopefully with your foreign uh, uh, minister experience, we can bring that in into the borough. Yeah, yeah. I mean, certainly that is something I would like to see more yeah. um, of Roch the borough's cultural diversity yeah. going into places like the arena and, and going into places like the Civic Centre in yeah. Haywood. Um, I think it's an important part of our lives that we need to celebrate. Yeah. And, you know, we've not decided on the Brexit yet, um, but, you know, the bilateral agreements that we have with Pakistan and UK. Yeah. And uh, you have a, a, um, quite a um, large uh, Pakistani and Kash Kashmiri uh, community in, in the borough. Uh, I think there's a great potential to improve the trade um, employment, education, tourism. Um, what can you d uh, do or suggest that we further improve that link? Mm. Yeah, I mean, that's a really interesting question because in my role as a Shadow Foreign Minister, mm. I was also responsible for issues relating to the Commonwealth. And I think, yeah. I think we could do a lot more with the Commonwealth. I think we, we have this thing called the Commonwealth and mm. I think it doesn't really sort of resonate with people, but, you know, Pakistan is one of our Commonwealth partners yes. and, I, and I think we need to do more about our shared values and standards. Yes. Yes. Um, you know, we, we, we've had, we have a great relationship yes. with yes. Uh, the Pakistani community here and, and I think we should do more to celebrate our shared values. Um, Post-Brexit, um, we, we all know we are looking mm -hmm. for trade deals yes. Um, yes. in countries outside of the EU mm -hmm. and I think um, we should be looking at countries like Pakistan, yeah, yeah. Um, we, we we already have a good bilateral relationship yeah, yeah. with Pakistan, and we should be um, working on that to I mean, try yeah. and uh, improve our, our trading partnerships Certainly. as well. And it, uh, it has been realised, and uh, the fact is that the Pakistani community, the Kashmiri community, has made a massive uh, difference and yeah. impact uh, through the contribution of citizens, and uh, the positive image I think needs to be built up more. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah. to be able to highlight some of the achievements as well. So it's not all gloomy. <laughs> oh no, no, yeah. no. I think we've got to be positive, we've got to be hopeful for the future. Absolutely. And now the world is recognising uh, the operations that have an impact on local and global environment. It's a, it's a hot topic at the moment. Yeah. Uh, what steps are being taken to address the uh, environment performance particularly through the uh, Russell Council? Uh, I mean, the council, the, the council is doing a lot of work in the borough. Yeah. Um, I mean, we've, we've, we're doing... We, the council agreed um, to declare a climate emergency, as Parliament yeah. did right. um, this year as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I know the council is looking really closely at the sort of things it does in the borough. Mm. Um, the, the, the 
planting that they do, they're yeah. trying to make it environmentally yeah. friendly, yeah. They're, they're trying to reduce the use of pesticides yeah. Yeah. that are damaging our insect and bee population. So locally, I think the council, due to, due to our I have to say, due to our fantastic councillors who are bringing these issues to the council's attention, we've done a lot of good work. Um, in terms of the Labour Party, we've got our Green Industrial Strategy, uh, which is in our manifesto for this election, and we're looking at the future. We're looking at green jobs, we're looking at green apprenticeships, we're trying to increase um, the numbers of electric vehicles on our roads and getting rid of um, petrol and diesel cars. And uh, we're aiming for zero carbon emissions by 2030. Um, there, I mean, the environment is so important, yeah, and you're absolutely yeah. right to highlight it, because if we can't get that right, yeah. we may as well forget about everything I mean, else. You can appreciate, as a, as a scientist, that the uh, scientists that have been, over the decades, have been emphasising mm. the need to tackle environment yeah. Uh, operations. Yeah. Uh, and I'm glad that the um, global network is um, working on these policies now. Yeah, Great. yeah, yeah. Great. If you were uh, to win the election, what would you do, do to change things and improve things? In the borough? In the borough. <laughs> <laughs> I'm interested in for my uh, in Rochdale borough. Yeah, I mean, I think it, um, it kind of reflects what we've already been talking about. Mm -hmm. It's about um, increasing our cultural awareness mm -hmm. Um, getting the community more involved. I mean, I've, I've been the MP for the last five years, yes. and you know, I have tried to. I, I try and accept every invitation I get. I do enjoy sure. meeting people, sure. going along to different community groups, and I would carry on doing that. Yes. Um, but I think what I would really like to see not is not just me winning the local election um, to be the MP for Hayward and Middleton. I would like to see. Um, Labour winning a majority because I think that's the only way we can bring about real change. We've had nine years of Tory cuts and Tory austerity and we really need investment in our public services now to try and rebuild our NHS, mm. our education system, our police services. So I'm hoping for more than just me winning in Hayward and Middleton. I want to see a Labour victory so that we can actually start to make real change and improve people's lives. Sure. Um, the process for voting, not many people sometimes know how to do mm. the voting, uh, and uh, particularly for those people who can't read and write. So what is the process for voting? Yeah, I mean, it's interesting you should <laughs> highlight that, because people with learning disabilities um, should have the same right to vote Absolutely. as anyone else. Um, there, there are guides available uh, mm -hmm. from, from organisations, from charities like MenCap, mm -hmm. that will take pictorial guides that will take people through yeah. the process. But it's very simple. The first thing is you need to be registered. And unfortunately, if you're not on the electoral register now, you won't be able to vote in if this election. If you're not election. in it, you can't win it. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> but the process is actually very simple. Yeah. And it does it does worry me that this isn't part of the school curriculum. I really do think that children should be taught Educated. the whole process because yeah. it, it is really easy. Um, so basic one, you have to be on the electoral register. Will affect yeah. The future life. Yeah. Two, yeah. you have to turn up on the day to cast your vote. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, it also helps if you have a political awareness, if you take yeah. an interest in what's going on around you, weigh up what the different parties are offering and what suits you, your family, your friends and your community the most. But it should be really simple. Anybody who's worried about it, if they go along to their polling station on the day, then they, sh they can take a friend with them. Yeah. Obviously, they have to make the mark in the box themselves, mm, yeah. but they can take someone with them right. to, to help them if they feel insecure about it. Okay. Uh, lastly, what message would you like to give to the community of the borough? Um, the message I'd like to give is, obviously, I'm a Labour Party representative, but I believe that the Labour Party represents the best deal for Hayward and Middleton, the best deal for the borough of Rochdale. Our manifesto brings hope yep, to communities. Yep, yep. Um, we have um, mini manifestos yep. on equality, on disability, mm -hmm. and we need to be able to bring people together 
rather than driving people apart. We need to embrace what we've got in common, mm -hmm. not what our differences are. Mm -hmm. And I do believe the Labour manifesto is offering hope for the future. Yeah. I don't believe that we should suffer another five years of Tory cuts, which is potentially what we're going to get if the Tories win on Friday morning. Um, so I would just say to people, choose hope and choose Labour. OK, Liz, thank you very much. Thank you. Right, uh, so voting uh, gives you the power to decide how the UK will run. So you must vote on Thursday. Please make a, every effort to get out, out there. And uh, I once again, Liz, I'd like to thank you very much for your uh, busy schedule. I wish you best for your efforts and commitment thank you. to the community. Thank you for watching. As always, be positive, look after your health, and importantly, look after each other. Thank you.